fact that kids don't get to go outside in nature that much anymore. And we're especially seeing this in the United States um, and the United Kingdom where there's been a lot of research where kids are spending less and less time outside. So maybe kids aren't exposed to nature and these wildlife um, experiences because they're spending less and less time playing outside. And in 2009, there was a big survey that was an international survey that asked mothers how often their children explored nature. And in this case, um, children actually were not exploring nature that often. So the percentage of mothers who reported that their child explored nature on a regular basis was very low in most countries. You can see here in China, 5%, in the US, 33%, in Brazil, 18%. So that really, I mean, I think that's a different experience than maybe many of us had when we were younger. You know, if I talk to my parents, they say that they got home from school and they spent their entire afternoon or evening outside playing until they came back for dinner. So I think this is an important thing to look at, this trend of spending less and less time outdoors. And this really influenced my desire to create photo projects that would help connect people with nature in their backyards. So when I returned from Peru, the first projects um, that I started working on were in Pennsylvania. And I worked on this project called Meet Your Neighbors, which was an international nature photography project to help connect kids to nature in their backyards and to introduce them to their non-human neighbors. So you can see me here in this photo studio out in the forest. And what I actually did was take a plastic sheet of um, white plastic and I would place the animal very carefully so as not to disturb it onto this background. And I would take photos that would create these beautiful white backgrounds and would allow me to blow up these animals to larger than life sizes in photo prints. So here you see a turtle. On this next slide, you see a butterfly. And these prints would be blown up to you know, a meter wide. So kids could suddenly pay attention and see the details in these incredible animals. And it was a really great experience. One night, I went into the state park and I photographed moths. And these are all moths that I photographed in one night in this state park. And even I was just astounded by the diversity and color of these species. Um, and, and I really got to know these species in a way that I hadn't before. So I worked with educators, young learner educators, in the state school system, in the state park. And we created a photo exhibit that showed these prints in very, very big prints. And we also created some education packets to teach kids about the species that they might see if they went out and really paid attention while exploring the park. And the really neat thing about this project is that adults who had been going to this park for their entire lives never knew that these species existed. So I think that it's a really great way to connect kids with the amazing nature locally. And so although I did this near my home in Pennsylvania, I've also taken this idea of nearby nature to other countries where I visited and worked. And as Dave said earlier, I spent about six months in the Indian Ocean um, on the island of Mauritius last year, working on a project to document Mauritius's endangered species. So I was working um, with the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation, which is a local nature conservancy that wants to talk about species conservation. So I just have a quick question for you guys. Do you know what this species is? You can, you can just type in, aha, I'm getting it. You guys are all getting it. It's the dodo, it's the dodo bird. So Mauritius is really famous for being the former home of the dodo. And the dodo was this bird that was driven to extinction within 100 years of its discovery. The dodo is kind of a mascot of Mauritius. Every kid knows about it. But kids don't know about the species that still live in the country. And so I started to work with the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation 
to create a project where we would create compelling images of these remaining species to help reconnect kids with nature. So here's one of those species, and this is actually a pretty incredible story. This is the Mauritius kestrel. And at one point in the 1970s, the Mauritius kestrel was the rarest bird in the world. There were only four Mauritius kestrels left in the entire world and one breeding pair. And a lot of conservationists thought, well, gosh, this is going to go extinct, just like the dodo. But instead, some conservationists came together and started an innovative captive breeding program. And now there are over 300 Mauritius kestrels flying free on the island of Mauritius. So it's a pretty incredible story. So we photographed the endangered species. I also photographed the more common species, like this Mauritius ornate day gecko. This species runs around in people's houses all over the island. And yet most people never take the time to look closely at it. So we were trying to show these species, the ones that aren't endangered yet, before they become rare or threatened. And I didn't forget the plants because, you know, we often overlook plants. Um, this is the Cafe Marone, and it's one of 50 species of plants in Mauritius that is critically endangered and has less than 10 individuals or 10 plants of this species remaining in the wild. It also has a really cool story that might appeal to this group. It was thought extinct in the 1980s and then was rediscovered by a schoolboy. Uh, so I think that's a pretty incredible story about how young people can really make a difference for science and the environment. So in addition to images of plants and animals, I was also photographing the people who were making a difference in Mauritius for conservation. This is a, an Aldabra giant tortoise, and it's pretty funny. He's actually on a scale getting a checkup um, to see how he's doing in his new home on this little island. And this was not even the biggest tortoise that went on these scales. Uh, but I really wanted to show that people can make a difference for animals. Here's another researcher holding a Mauritius giant fruit bat. Um, and this bat is really, really cute. Um, it's one of the, it's the only native mammal species on Mauritius, apart from some other little tiny bats. And I really wanted to show that conservation is in our hands and to empower young people to know that they could make a difference. And so we created this series of photos into an exhibit that went around to schools and museums across the country. And for many of these students, these images represented their very first exposure to these species. So I think this type of effort is incredibly important, this effort to connect kids with nature. And I, I just want to take one moment, if you guys can imagine with me what it would be like if we connected kids to nature in their backyards everywhere. If we did it really effectively, if we made young learners care about being environmentally responsible, we might not even need international conservation organizations, right? If we all protected the forests and rainforests in the places where we live, we could make a huge difference for conservation. And so that's kind of my big vision for the world. And that's what I'd really like to see happen. And you all are the people that really make that happen on a day-to-day -day basis.